Okay, uh, let's get started. Uh, before I start, uh, because there are many, many questions uh, that I got even before class, I would want to bring up the uh, GitHub discussions. I have been answering the questions. Uh, I think main questions like uh, I get like someone asked about the scoring policy before the uh, class start. So uh, I actually uh, did not reply to him face to face because I already put the answer uh, like very much in details. So um, the short answer is that everything is stated in the instruction. So if you uh, did exactly what the instruction is saying, like usually you get like almost a full scores. Uh, uh, another thing is like a little bit subjective uh, in the instructions will be like the progress that you make like when you plan certain issues to be implemented whether you have to stick to your schedule uh, that's like a little bit subjective and then uh, also we, uh, we actually select a best group uh, and then the best group will get a bonus points and uh, I don't know whether we will as I say, we, we plan to have cash prizes, but then like the, um, the cash we haven't received. So uh, we are not making any kind of guarantee that you will get any prize, but uh, you will definitely get a bonus score for, for the best group. So uh, we do actually encourage you to uh, participate. Uh, and then also uh, another reminder is that you should not be so score driven because uh, I, I mean we have a lot of people who say that this actually helps in their job interviews uh, the fact that you are contributing to open source I think I share some job uh, advertisements and they in fact say that this is like an added bonus if you have uh, contribute to open source uh, in terms of I think if you want to go to grad school after that uh, I mean if you actually contribute to some open source projects uh, particular in the field that you choose, like for example, uh, in some kind of uh, uh, library, uh, machine learning libraries or some other, uh, for software engineering uh, especially, that is really much helpful because uh, I have students who, who uh, during the interview, they actually ask to look at what, what kind of things that you have uh, implemented. So uh, that being said, that's why I feel like you should not actually uh, just care about uh, the score for this class per se like uh, and then I think the other uh, things is about how to choose uh, projects and then also how to choose issues like we don't really actually micromanage at the github issue level and then there are some questions about whether you can change your issues after after you have selected the answer is yes uh, because uh, we know that some issues get close like someone uh, may volunteer to fix it before you did so we actually allow you to change issues uh, so uh, just the fact that someone is choosing the github projects before you doesn't mean that you you immediately get all the issues in priority that sounds not fair so uh, we encourage you to communicate with the developers uh, in terms of steps in uh, collaborating with the developers is the I think this is the first question that I answer it's like uh, basically leave a comment uh, saying that you are interested in fixing the issues tell the developers what is your uh, idea in fixing and then uh, if they don't have a test case add a test case so that you can uh, be sure what what is your goal to fix like if if you have fixed these issues, the test case should be passing. Uh, and actually, that brings us to the topics uh, also um, that I will cover today is more on unit testing. And then you, yes, should be discussing with developers your proposed solution. So um, uh, I think all of this is like frequently asked questions. Another thing is about the language. I think language-wise, I already answered these questions. Is even in the Q and A in the instruction, so we'll not answer this in details. Uh, MP0 is being due, I think, tomorrow. Uh, so if you haven't done this uh, in my last lab, I think everyone 
kind of finish this. So uh, just make sure that you finish this uh, before you finish uh, project proposal because uh, essentially project proposal you need to write it in bit.md. Uh, if you don't know the syntax how to write uh, in uh, write the readme correctly, then then uh, it's not really good. So we we ask you to finish this first before finishing the project proposal. And then yes, project proposal is due soon. Uh, and then we have the main repository. I think this we covered this last time. So if you have other questions, you can either post in the GitHub discussion or if you think that you have some private questions like whether I should choose this repository, you can send me an email. Otherwise, uh, that's all for the administrative info. Uh, and then I think like uh, last week we left off with uh, the concept of pair programming. Uh, I just put this slides again uh, so that you, uh, once you get started with your projects, you would uh, try to use this uh, pair programming kind of setup in Git to acknowledge your pair programmer. Uh, I think this is quite good feature. I haven't tried it, but I think that uh, uh, this is uh, quite good because um, you can uh, actually put two authors in the same commit and then uh, that also become more fair, I feel. Uh, and then uh, we uh, will kind of continue talking about XP. So, uh, there are several concepts uh, that we have talked about. Uh, in last week, we mainly covered pair programming and its benefits. And then uh, uh, the iteration planning, actually, you are kind of doing in your project proposal. Uh, and then what you're going to implement is uh, something like user story. I think I started talking about user story uh, in the last few minutes in the previous lecture, but not, not really in details. So, um, what is a user story? User story actually is uh, uh, what the features that the customer wants. Usually, you want it to be the smallest steps, uh, smallest amount that uh, you can uh, use to define a path through the system. So there could be many paths. Uh, this path actually uh, also gives you kind of like a condition. So, if you have um, a uh, path here could be uh, you handle like the normal cases, like for example, in the bank account systems, you are withdrawing normally, and then you should get like the withdrawal amount, and then you can have some exceptional path where you have a uh, withdraw and invalid amount, and then you get an exceptions. Uh, usually, it's written by uh, the customers, uh, not by the developers. But uh, in your case, you may be uh, write this user story or some form of this in the form of issues. But for each issues, sometimes the issue could be very complicated. So you can break it down to several user story. Uh, typically, they write it in an index class uh, cards for this uh, user story. And then, uh, so basically, what that needs is like uh, just a lot of index. I don't have index card with me today, unfortunately. Uh, so it's just like a square kind of, I think like almost like this shape. And then uh, and then you write the, the things on top. And then you basically write uh, usually the goal of the systems, like uh, for example, applicants submit and loan applications uh, or uh, like applicants withdraw money, something like that. And then uh, you want to think about what is the steps that the user will do when they are doing these activities. This kind of uh, steps is very useful when you are implement, for example, for an app, uh, and then you want to say like uh, the user is doing some steps. Uh, even though in the UI level, the user may want to achieve a particular goal, but then you will need to break it into several steps. So uh, the idea is that in each of the cards, you can write not more than one step. And then uh, usually you have this kind of formats, like uh, you have a title and then uh, several words, and then uh, you basically have an acceptance test. Acceptance test here 
it's not really automated tasks. It's basically uh, what happens when the customers is trying to uh, use this for their own purpose. Uh, like, uh, for example, the customer will try to run your systems for some basic functionality. And then uh, the story point here is like you can see here that it's a story point. It's basically, um, it's like a number of days of ideal developments. Uh, the ideal developments here, uh, they assume that you don't have any distractions. So like you can focus fully on that service and then how much time you need. And then you usually write a few sentence and then you can have priorities. I think this whole structure is very much uh, similar to uh, GitHub issues uh, sometimes uh, because GitHub issues also have priorities uh, and then the story point sometimes, if you look at, uh, if you remember, we show Baxilla in the Baxilla uh, issues, they actually have a priority, like how important this is, and then story points, like what is the estimated time that you need to solve these problems? So uh, this is quite uh, similar to that. And then uh, for the acceptance test, in, in this case, is basically, uh, like here we, we say that when you create an issues, we want to keep a running issues with the shop descriptions of the scan item and the price. And then uh, we talk about what is the operations, basically the cashier scan three cans of uh, beans, spinach, and then toothbrush. And then to verify, we want to see uh, what is printed in the receipt. Uh, so this kind of acceptance has actually I think that uh, it's good if you want to communicate with the developers. Uh, it can be not like an automated test if you couldn't write an automated test, but then if when you are discussing about the general idea how you want to fix the uh, bug, you can talk about like uh, uh, what exactly you want to see. Like for example, uh, if you actually implement an app that do something, like you can say what expect that uh, what is expected in the screen, like uh, whether you see a printed receipt with particular item, and then if the developer say that is okay, I mean that's actually very similar to an acceptance test. Um, so this is uh, quite informal, as you can see, you can communicate, and then you kind of know what is uh, expected to be there uh, after that after this communication, and then. Uh, I think this part, like uh, we talk about uh, planning now. Uh, so after we know how to divide different kind of issues into uh, user stories, the whole iterations is uh, we want to implement a set of user stories. So we want to do this planning in an iteration planning. Uh, and then when we are doing this planning, usually we want to uh, divide it into several parts like we can divide it into uh, velocity velocity is like the speed how fast you you are doing something and then uh, uh, in this we need to estimate the size and then do the durations and then we have the uh, we can have prioritizations and then this uh, give us the iteration plan so this exactly what you are doing uh, with the uh, planning for your project proposal. Uh, the concepts here, uh, we actually uh, make use of several unit of time. that could be story points like the one that have covered. Uh, so the story points is basically, um, it's not really the exact values, not really like uh, if you say it's one hour, two hours, it's like the relative values. Uh, uh, you want to kind of compare when you have several, for example, GitHub issues, you want to know how hard it is compared to another issues or whether these issues have any dependency with other issues. Uh, and then uh, you can estimate the time that you will spend because sometimes if you fix one issues, then the other issues become uh, quite easy to fix. So uh, this is relative time, so you may want to use story point to, to kind of estimate that. Ideal time is like uh, basically you don't really, uh, uh, basically don't care about all the other activities. So like uh, when you watch a football game, for example, uh, 60 minutes is the total time 
uh, even though in the middle they have like a break or anything like that. But uh, elapsed time is uh, basically more like the whole uh, time that uh, when you are doing something. So this like, for example, three hours for a football game. Uh, and then velocity is, is just trying to measure what is your rate of progress. Uh, this uh, is good when you want to measure how, how, how well you are progressing for your report, uh, for your projects. Uh, for priorities, uh, we don't have very uh, cost grain like uh, numbers of uh, uh, so it's actually uh, just high, medium, and low. You can just uh, say which is the highest priorities. Uh, usually, as I say, if it's a security related issues or if it's like a crash, um, you should put it in a high priority because that costs a uh, effect that is not desirable. Uh, sometimes if it's an important features, it will be put in medium and then uh, low is just like not, not really much uh, important. But uh, so you can uh, choose to implement it later uh, for this reason. And then um, so when you are estimating the size, uh, that actually give you uh, an estimation of the velocity. When you are estimating the size, that could be uh, is actually related to the game that we're going to play. So uh, usually, when you are estimating a size, uh, they have a guideline. Uh, the guideline is that you want to choose a medium size story because a medium size story usually you kind of know that uh, like you don't need to spend so much time usually. Uh, so that uh, is uh, basically. Uh, trying to say that you choose the medium size, give it a five because you know that um, medium size stories are kind of in the middle, not too difficult, that you need more than five points, story points. Uh, and then so you choose this and then other kind of story could be relative to that. Then it's uh, give you the guidelines quite easy because you choose the one that you think is that average in size and then other things that are more difficult to that you give it a kind of uh, larger than that, like twice as big, half as big, uh, almost not quite as big, uh, a little bit bigger. So then you uh, then you map it to the value. So this kind of give you an estimation. But if you have many GitHub issues, first choose the one that is medium and then choose other that is relative to it and then you get a value uh, uh, after these steps. Uh, so like uh, this uh, illustration here in the middle, like we have a near term iterations and a few iterations away. Uh, so this gives you an estimation and then ideal days and elapsed times uh, is uh, aimed to support, uh, I think this also very uh, good in some sense because if you are estimating ideal time, usually it's uh, do not take care of any kind of uh, a uh, reason that may cause you a delay, but then you want to estimate elapsed time, then uh, they actually have certain uh, benefits because you can take into account like sick times or meeting times or your personal issues. Like if let's say you, you know that at the end of the semester you have something else or like so it, it helps you better in the estimations that uh, shouldn't put very, very difficult issues towards the end, for example. Uh, when you are estimating ideal time, uh, uh, ideal days, actually um, we uh, we have very uh, optimistic kind of uh, kind of uh, estimation. So basically, we think that this is the only thing that you will work on, and that uh, everything that you will need will be on hand. Uh, that actually important to install all the tools that we are going to use because. Uh, Sometimes you need to spend some time into downloading, installing the tools, and then uh, then it will be no uh, interruptions. And then uh, when you are actually uh, looking at whether you want to look at story points versus ideal days, story points is actually better in the sense that it helps to drive uh, cross-functional behavior because you look essentially at what the user story is doing. And it doesn't really decay, it doesn't change according to the experience. They just help you to measure purely the size. 
and then uh, usually it's faster to estimate story points uh, and then uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, it's actually kind of if uh, like my ideal days may not be your ideal days so uh, it's easier to favor ideal days in the sense that like uh, we can explain outside of teams and estimations usually faster at first uh, so this um, to are a little bit different ideal days like uh, is uh, precise measurements about what uh, what is the days that you need story points is like kind of relative and then uh, when you want to get uh, estimations you can actually make use of several uh, parts like you can just uh, look at uh, expert opinions like based on your experience uh, that could be in your group for example there are someone who are more experienced in this but then there is some advantage, uh, disadvantage because we want to consider a lot of expects and then uh, and this uh, if you have only one expert that will not be enough in the estimations and then you can do analogy uh, by doing the relativity with other user stories uh, but uh, this also like have some disadvantage or advantage and then you can also do disaggregations basically means breaking the stories into smaller stories uh, and then uh, but you need to make sure that you don't miss any parts when you are breaking this uh, so that you uh, when you implement all the mini tasks you can get the whole uh, task and then uh, planning poker is kind of what we will try hopefully it works I don't know uh, and then uh, this will uh, essentially want to combine the expert opinions here and then the analogy when you are comparing against different user story and then when you are breaking it into smaller kind of uh, user story or task. Okay, I guess this is not really uh, a question. I think this is like a math mathematical question, but let's see. Um, everyone answer quite fast. Uh, let's see whether everyone answer correctly. I guess most people, even though in different language, uh, most people are recognizing this sequence. I guess uh, this should be quite easy as an answer. Uh, so this is like a Fibonacci sequence. I guess like for computer scientists, Fibonacci sequence means something. Uh, uh, I think like special and then I think like I just get the I think I did not see any other answer so I guess maybe you see the the, 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 the slides so what I wanted to do now is to show you I think the planning poker um, video I hope that I can play this and then we can play this game uh, so I need to first uh, explain this hi and welcome to the agile Academy in this agile and practice talk we'd like to show you how agile teams use planning poker and the concept of the wisdom of the crowd to estimate effort required to get the work done Planning Poker is a tool that encourages all team members to contribute to the activity of estimation and share their opinions, thoughts and concerns. Estimation happens after prioritizing the work using the Moscow method. 
It's essential to have the people who are going to do the actual work in the room and they feel empowered to speak. Over the last few days, Susan, the business analyst of the team, who are delivering a new employee performance review system for the HR department, has captured the requirements on story cards. Susan and Jen, the product owner, joins the rest of the team to elaborate on the user stories on the story cards. This helps the team to get a better understanding of how much work might be involved so their estimates are more accurate. Bill, the team leader, explains how the team will now start to estimate the work so they can get a high level look at the total effort required. So team, let's play some planning poker. Poker? Bring on the cards! Poker is my favourite game! Planning poker involves a whole team and uses what is called the wisdom of the crowd. As it turns out, a diverse group of people actually get closer to an accurate answer than any one expert. In the same way, planning poker brings multiple diverse expert opinions together. Bill, as the Agile team leader, explains to the team about planning poker, OK, here's how planning poker works. All team members get a deck of planning poker cards. Each card in the deck has a single number on it. If you think the story we are estimating is small and easy to get done, you choose a low number. If you think it requires a lot of effort and the story is big, you pick a card with a high number. As you probably have noticed, the numbers on the cards are not in the order of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This sequence, which is based on the Fibonacci sequence, helps us to take into account the uncertainties that come with estimating large tasks. For example, let's say you are estimating the task of cleaning up one room. If you then need to estimate the task of cleaning up 5 rooms, you can't assume that cleaning up 5 rooms is exactly 5 times the estimate of cleaning up 1. There will be variables such as the size of the room and level of clutter. These details make it more difficult to estimate it precisely. The same is true for stories and tasks on the project. The bigger something is, the more difficult it becomes to estimate with any confidence. Jen, the product owner, reads the first story out. A brief team discussion on the story takes place to bring out the risks and work of each team member involved so that everyone's aware of what the whole team's workload will be to get this story done. Bill continues with his explanation of planning poker. OK guys, now we have gained some knowledge around the story, pick a planning poker card with the number that reflects your view on the size of the story. Now, don't show the card yet, just place it face down on the table. All made a choice? Then turn the card over and show your number at the same time. Ready? Turn your card! It seems we mostly agree on this estimate, but there are a couple of people who are at the opposite ends of the sequence. Would you like to explain to the team why you think the story is a 1 or a 5 and then we can revote? After hearing from both parties, the team then play their poker cards again until they reach consensus based on the majority of an average estimate. Susan writes the estimate on a story card. In this case, it's three. Now that we have an estimate for one story, we can then set the rest of the stories against it and come up with a relative estimate for all of them. The team finishes the planning poker game and have all the story cards estimated. They can now plan the work and get started. Thanks for inviting me along guys. This was a great exercise, particularly for me as a product owner to see how the work is estimated. I never thought I'd be playing my favorite game at work. When Agile teams estimate, they don't try to be accurate because change is inevitable. If you want to learn more about Agile, the Agile Academy... Okay, I guess you kind of understand the, the, the idea of the planning poker. I think like in the video, it also showed the index card. Uh, so I guess that's good because I don't have the index card actually. The uh the website that I have shared in the team uh in the in the group uh you can use it for estimating your uh your project as well um uh, because I think like it's actually handle better uh people who are a smaller team like um I have certain user story that are more uh. The kind of like I try to 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 kind of uh, see, and then um, and then so the whole uh, basically uh, uh, whole way is like there is uh, two kind of parts. Like uh, when you are playing with your group mates uh, later on for your projects, you can also have uh, moderator as the leader of the team uh, and then uh, other people will be 
a different kind of role in the team. So you can see this role actually quite similar to your role in your uh, in your project. And then uh, each estimator will uh, actually select a card privately uh, because this we want to kind of make use of everyone's expertise here. And then uh, all the cards uh, later on will be turned over, and like like in the video, like and then. Um, maybe a re-estimation is required, and then we repeat until you get the same kind of estimations. So this kind of thing um, is not just for fun. I think uh, it's also uh, some way to say, like, if you want to know as a team, what is your expertise, uh, whether you think it's very difficult. For example, for certain tasks, some of you may have uh, experience, some of you may not have experience. So the expertise will be very much different uh, so for this like um, I will serve as the motivator I don't know whether with so many students in the in the team role uh, last time we used a different website and then it uh, doesn't really handle so many people in the team so we'll see whether this uh, if you couldn't get in later on because uh, it have full, uh, it's okay I mean like uh, uh, the the way is so that some of you get uh, to know this game, and then each students actually use more piece of paper. This, if you want to do it without the website, if if you just want to do it offline with the things that you have, you just need like papers and then pencil and that's all. As you can see, uh, and then uh, for this, uh, we actually I, uh, oops. I think it's kind of slow, but I guess if you uh, use your phone or uh, I think because I'm doing lectures and everything at the same time, but uh, I think you can click on the link. So I feel like you don't need VPN to go to GitHub, but sometimes like it's really slow. But uh, anyway, uh, the 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 whole uh go is uh i i go and check for certain issues like um and i realized that this project actually don't have anyone choosing this even though this is actually i think quite valid uh if you are interested still looking at what kind of things to support uh i would recommend choosing this uh, google authenticator because Thing is quite famous projects and is by Google and then uh, this is useful indicating and then they, uh, this is kind of like an one of the one of the uh, open issues like and then they say uh, something like QR code not being generated to match uh, email if special character are present so I think that such kind of user store uh, such kind of issues is actually 
say about what is the specific kind of problem like uh, when you have a special issues maybe the special issues are uh, special characters are are not being uh, handled correctly uh, I think here I forget what is the exact maybe a star or something like that I don't know like underscore uh, in the in the email uh, will not be handled correctly I think this is oh okay I get this uh, so they say that uh, if you have a plus for example and then uh, these issues will have a problem uh, and then like uh, of course I don't know whether they already resolved these problems but I think there is some discussions and then like it's also seems like valid in, in some sense. Uh, so this like uh, is uh, basically the user story that we are going to, uh, uh, the goal is to implement these issues. So if you want to implement these issues, I, um, I think this is, um, I think this is an app. So um, so that's the reason why I put two user story, and then one of the user story is adding an espresso test. Um, the reason I put this user story is because it also helps to address like the uh, the problems of you are not clear with what is the expertise of your group mates. Like for those of you who don't know uh, what is an espresso test then like you may need some more time to kind of uh, understand and learn and then for those of you who have uh, already expertise maybe some of you in the group mates already know about this then uh, then they will have less estimations and then uh, the other user story is handle special character I think that actually could be break, broken down into several uh, plays but then uh, from this user story, I'm not really sure like how how, how well in breakdowns. I am estimating that maybe we just need to handle the parsing of this because the whole points of valid email are already being implemented. So we may just need to handle the special case, uh, and then that's all. So it may not be so difficult as we thought. So uh, let's see what. Uh, I saw quite a few people in the room. Uh, I don't know. There's more people in the room. And then uh, I think the goal is to kind of... Um, so we want to wait for you to vote. I think I need to... I need to open this for voting or something. So, uh, can someone vote it or not so much? I think I need to wait for you to vote. Okay, I saw that someone voted. So, uh, so you you can vote. Uh, so the sequence that you see here is more like a Fibonacci sequence that uh, all of you already recognize. So here, basically, the estimate, uh, I think, like, not, not really reasonable for the whole class to implement exactly this uh, thing. So uh, I think all of you will work differently, but then maybe it's good to see, like, or what is your opinions about this or this uh, parts. Like, uh, so these two things are relative, like, uh, some of you who kind of know espresso, then you may not need so much time. But some of you who feel like maybe this handling special character, I can kind of spend less time because I know how to write Java code, I know how to uh, add like a conditions or some handling, but I don't know how to add the espresso test, so I need more uh, time. Uh, so it's just like an estimation, like. I don't know why uh, some of you are. Uh, I hope that there is no bug, but uh, it seems very strange. Like I'm keep waiting for many many people to vote for some reason. Maybe I will wait a little bit to for the voting to be kind of like. Uh, I think I I'm high, but I don't know whether I need to vote. 
Oh, maybe I need to log in. I think. Yeah, actually, I don't know. Like, I when I was testing this, it sounds uh, that I can change, but maybe I'm not logging in into correct accounts. Maybe I should log in this screen. Uh, but this is my board. Okay, I don't know. Like, uh, it sounds very kind of buggy. Maybe I will need to. I will need to kind of uh, ask this in, in. Sorry, I need to ask this in the in the in the in the WeChat group. Maybe it will be better because uh, this sounds very strange. Hey, uh, sorry for that. I, 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 I think like this become crazy when so many people are voted. I think like I need to log into the account or something like that because um, before that you can actually uh, just review the cards, but here I'm not finding that option. Uh, so um, I have to vote and then. Uh, I think this one I cannot see my score. Or I can. I don't know. I guess I cannot. Uh, I think this is because this is the the TA account. Uh, so in my account, I actually see who 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 is voting. Uh, and then uh, actually quite surprising because for the adding the espresso test. I see there are two people voted for uh, only need an estimation of one. Maybe they have a prior experience with Espresso. And then most of you actually voted five. So uh, that's like uh, maybe the middle. Uh, you think that maybe you need some time to understand this, but not too much. And then uh, the rest are, um, we have equal vote for 
uh, both 8 and uh, 13. So maybe there are a uh, majority of you don't really understand uh, espresso test. Uh, but actually, um, it's not really difficult actually when you kind of learn it. And then for handling uh, this, um, less people voted one and three. Uh, a lot of people think that because you need to modify code, write codes, uh, at least it needs uh, five or eight or 13. So I think that's actually um, show also the expertise here. Um, most of you, I think, uh, those are, we get more people who are familiar with Expresso, so there are more votes about uh, uh, adding a task should uh, get less time. And then uh, most of you think that implementing this, uh, there are five, I think like everyone trying to select the middle. Um, that's also okay, but like if you select all the issues to be five, I, I mean you don't get a priority, that's like the problem. Um, but I think like uh, you kind of understand like what is this. Uh, you can try to use the website or like just paper and pen to to do these estimations for uh, all of you in the team or just within the pair you can do this as well. Uh, but pair I think like you don't really need so much iterations but then uh, the point is that if you have several user story you want to do the estimations uh, at the same time, you kind of get an idea of what is the expertise of the other people, and then uh, and then you will need to, uh, of course, uh, in your own cases, you will break this uh, to use the story by uh, referring to a GitHub issues. So uh, I think that that's kind of like uh, show you how can you do the divisions by velocity. And then uh, the velocity is basically measuring uh, how fast is you moving. And then uh, finally, actually, you need to calculate uh, by summing all the story points to each user story. Uh, and then uh, we assume that actually team will produce in future the iterations at the rate of their past average velocities. Uh, basically, like yesterday weather, usually you estimate uh, how fast you are working based on your previous part. So um, like how fast you are doing one part of the assignments or in one week how fast you are moving, uh, you will use as a guidance for next week, for example. Um, and then uh, there is also the prioritizations. Prioritizations usually driven by customers. Uh, in your case, uh, it's mostly by those who actually open the GitHub issues. Uh, usually want to choose it based on whether it's uh, applicable to broad base of customers like that I think uh, important also uh, in this case like if you are choosing something that affect for example if there are many platform I think in the issues that I uh, have chosen as an example it's uh, they have two platforms for Android and iPhone I think like but I think two platforms have the same problem. So that means that it's quite broadly uh, desirable in two platforms. So this is actually good, a good sign that uh, these uh, features we maybe need it first. And then uh, also desirable whether it's uh, important to small number of important customers, like whether the customer itself sometimes for a GitHub issue, the customer is the developers who open this. So uh, that's they are the important customers rather than like a user, and then uh, also how cohesive uh, is the story in relation to other stories. So we want to kind of zoom in a high uh, priority issues and then zoom out the not so high priority issues. Uh, so it become relativity with the zooming in which issues, and then. Uh, so then it becomes kind of uh, breaks down to like uh, if you want to have, to have like 30 story points. Okay, since we reached the first half of the uh, le uh, lectures, we will take a break and then we will come back uh, with uh, the rest of the lectures.